I want to welcome everybody that's here to Mac to the Future. Today's class is not called Getting Started with Mac because it's very difficult to do a Getting Started with Mac class to gauge where everyone is. But what I want to show you instead is I want to show you three things over the next 40 minutes or so that a Mac can do out of the box that other machines can't do. Does that make sense? I want to show you three things that a Mac can do out of the box that other machines can't do. What I mean by out of the box is out of the box. So where's my, uh, where's my, okay, there we go. So I mean, when I say out of the box, I mean legitimately straight out of the box that we want to do with it. So the three things I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to sign a document using your Mac. So this will work with any Mac. What I mean by sign a document is I mean if someone sends you an email and says sign this and send it back to me, how you can do that without a scanner or anything like that. How to edit a movie in iMovie. So I'm going to show you how to edit some video real quick. And then the last thing I'm going to show you is something I could never show when I worked at Apple. I want to show you, do we all have iPhones or iPads? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to make any song you happen to have in iTunes into a ringtone for free. So, but the goal of this is I want to show you three things, and I'm going to show you other things along the way, but I have three main goals I want to hit, if that makes sense. I want to show you three things that you've probably never done on a Mac before. Cool? Make sense? Yeah. All right. So what we need to do first is we're going to pretend, and we're going to go through this whole process, but I want to make sure we understand what we're going to do. Imagine that you're at C, and someone sends you a document and says, sign this document and send it back to me. I'm sure we've all had that. You know, you're somewhere, and someone sends you a house real estate paper or something like that, says, do this and send it back to me. How do you do it? You, you go, you beg someone for, well, you go, you beg someone for a printer, then you print it, then you go back to that same person you begged for the printer and ask for the scanner or the fax machine, and then you send it back, correct? <laughs> What's very cool is we can do this directly with a Mac, and that's what we're going to do. But I want to take a couple steps back. We're going to do some stuff to do it properly, and I want to show you how we make a document, then how we sign that document. So in the upper right-hand corner of your computer, you're going to see a little magnifying glass. Do you see that? Yeah. Upper right-hand corner. Click on the little <coughs> magnifying glass. And type in the word text, T-E-X-T. T-E-X-T. <coughs> what we're opening is we're opening a program called Text Edit. It's similar to a word pad or a notepad, nothing super crazy. We should have, yep, just click on it. Text Edit. There we go. Yeah, we're good. It's coming up. Just click on text edit. Click. Oh, that's okay. Yep. Oh, oh, I click on this. Yep. It doesn't matter where you do it. Just, just hit it there. The enter key will do it too. So just hit the enter key again. Return. Yeah. So hit enter, return. We're going to be in two seconds anyway. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to write a contract that we need to sign. Now this is a contract that some of you have already gone ahead and breached. Uh, I will not gain 10 pounds on this cruise. You can do kilos, you can do uh, stones, you can do whatever you want to do, but I will not gain 10 pounds on this cruise. Um, we have to sign it. We have to make it legal. But that's a story for a couple minutes from now. Okay. So we've got we've got our text. But here's the problem: is it small? It's really tiny. Yeah. Don't step ahead. I want to show you something cool. So how if it's small? How do we make it bigger? Highlight it. Highlight it. So we need to highlight it. Highlight it. But I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it a different way. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want you to select everything by holding down Command and A. If you look at your keyboard, to the left or the right of the space bar, there's a command. Just like you have this right over there. Command and A, as in Apple. Command A. We do it. Yep. Go ahead and do it, and you'll see that it highlights. And then you can let go, and you'll see the text is highlighted in blue. Yep. No. Command. Have an eight. No, we're, we're, okay. No. Command first and then A. Oh, okay. Now what we want to do is we want to make that text bigger. Now we're gonna learn along the way there are easy ways to do things. 
and hard ways to do things. Plus. Yes, we're going to do that one. So the hard way, in my opinion, is you go and you choose the different font sizes and you do all that. The easy way, remember the command key we pressed before? Yeah. Hold down command again, do command first, and then you're going to hit the plus button that's up next to delete. Hit the plus button a couple of times. Hold down command while you're doing it. Oh, okay, I see, okay. Hold down. Yes, you have to hold down okay. command okay. and then hold press down. and then press plus and you'll see it gets bigger, right? Yeah, right. It's not plus. Yeah, it is. No, plus and minus together. Yeah. Well, the plus is on the top. Yeah. The cross. Shift, no, no. Not just command. Hold it down. So A. Okay. And then plus. How is this up? We have to start again with the A. Well, because you clicked off of it. Not not everyone, but okay. okay. Does that make sense? We've made it bigger. I don't think it's big enough. Let's make it. Let's make it even bigger. Let's go and make it a little bigger. Yeah. The same thing. Uh huh. So if you deleted it, let me tell you the secret. Hold down Command and press the letter Z. Oh. Okay. So that's undo. So have we got it there? Command. So we just need it a little bit bigger. Now to sign a document on the Mac. That document must be a PDF file. Uh -huh. okay. Is this a PDF file? No. no. How do we know it's not a PDF file? It's a text file. It says it. I agree. Um, now, there are two ways to make it into a PDF file. The easy way and the hard way. Which way do you think we're going to do? The hard way. No. Here's why. The easy way only works in applications that are made by Apple. The hard way works in applications that are made across the map. So we can do the easy way. I'm going to show you the easy way on the way to the hard way. But the easy way only works in applications that are made by Apple. The hard way will work in Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Google Chrome, all those different ones like that. So we have what we want typed typed. We're going to go up to where it says file. Do you see where it says file in the upper left-hand corner? Next one is PDF. That is the easy way. We're not going to do it that way, but we're going to talk about that on the way. So you see file and you'll see export as PDF. So click up file, upper left-hand corner, and then export as PDF. Don't click it. I just want you to see that it's there. Hit cancel on it if you clicked it. Because that's not the way I want to do it, because that won't be there in every application. Does that make sense? That's why we're not going to do that. That's only going to be in applications that are made by Apple. So I want you to go up to File again and hit Print. File Print. Don't actually print it. Just hit the file. Yep. Just stay in this little window right here. Now, anywhere you can print on a Mac, you can print to PDF. So you see right here where it says PDF in the left-hand corner? Yeah. Click down on that. I don't have print. Yeah, you do. Ah, you clicked on Finder. It's okay, I got you. It's not big enough for me. There we go. File. Print. You see where it says PDF in the bottom left-hand corner? Yeah. We're going to click there, and you're going to say open PDF in preview. Now, Preview is the built-in okay, okay. PDF reader. What we are essentially going to do in the next few minutes is we are going to sign a document using the Preview application. So this is an application that comes on every Mac. It's been on Macs for the last 10 years. It's had this capability for about the last six years, to give you an idea of it. So we're going to sign this document with Preview. What is, what is the Any theory on how we're going to sign the document? Thoughts? Thoughts? Anybody have an idea? Remember the blank sheet of paper? Yeah. Grab your blank sheet of paper, the one that I told you to keep. Hopefully we all have a blank sheet of paper. I want you to take this sheet of paper and I want you to fold it in half. This is napkin folding. And then we're going to fold it in half once more. It doesn't matter which way you folded it the first time. We're going to wind up with a little square box about this big. Now, what we need to do is it has to be a blank white sheet of paper that we're doing this with. So when you do this on your machine, you just grab a blank white sheet of printer paper, and then what you do, I'm going to do it so you can see the size. 
you need to sign your name about business card size in the center of the sheet of paper. Business card size, center of the sheet of paper. And then we're gonna go for the back, we're gonna put the date on the back. <clears throat> What's the date? It's the 26th. So for most crew members on board, you know what today is? Brothers Day. No. C day three. We don't know much more than that. This is C day three. Tomorrow's Barbados. Orlando's laughing because that's one hundred percent true. If you don't yeah, you can put the twenty sixth, you can put C day three. That's all we know. Is today C day three, tomorrow's Barbados, after it's Saint Lucia, then Saint Kitts, then Saint Martin, C day four, C day five, and Embarkation day. So we've got these two things on here, right? So here's the question of the day. How do we get them inside of the computer? Thoughts? Is it, is it okay if it's not in the middle? So if it's not in the middle, it's going to be more difficult. Here's the great thing. Flip the paper and do it. You want to make sure you have a bit of a white border all the way around. You'll see why in a minute. So we need to get this in the computer. Any thoughts on how we're going to get it in the computer? Yeah. Through the slot. Through the slot. So if you look on the right-hand side of your computer, just reach around to the right-hand side, right-hand, the other right-hand, yeah, yeah, you should see a CD slot. You take a piece of paper and you put it in the CD slot. I'm messing with you. There is no CD slot. Is that coming out tomorrow? No, you don't need the CD slot. But here's what's funny. I used to make that joke on reflection, which has CD slots. And what would I remain? What would I do the rest of the day? Pull paper out. Pull paper out of the CD slot. That was my day on reflection. I made sure that when I taught this class here, I didn't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the camera, which every Mac machine has a camera. We're going to use the camera, and we're going to take an image of this with the camera. But I want to be very clear. We are not taking a picture of it. We're going to create what's called a vector. What that means is it's going to preserve the quality of this file no matter how big we make it. So you notice that we, this only takes up like an eighth of a page or so. We can actually, once we take this picture, we can stretch it to the entire page with no distortion. That's the theory. So, you just scroll down, you just scroll down. Oh, I scroll down. Okay, so we're going to go to the top where it says view. Do you see where it says view on the top? You need to be inside the preview. View. View up on the top. And we're going to say show markup toolbar. View and show markup toolbar. You see that? View, it's near the bottom. Uh huh. It's great. I'm going to have a French translation already in this video. This is great. <laughs> and then what you will see is you should see a little thing right up here that says J and N. Do you see that? The little, it looks like a little signature scrolly thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Click on that. No. J oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't. It looks like J N to me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Click on there. And then you should see a pretty picture come up. And let me tell you exactly what we're doing. We're holding it up directly to the camera. So go with the signature first on the blue line. So we need to, the camera's at the top of the computer where that uh, little, the little okay. light's coming from. That's where the camera is. Okay. Okay. You hold it up right there on the blue line. Yeah. You've got to keep it still for a second. And then it will go ahead and take in your signature. And then you're just going to go ahead and you're going to hit done. Oh, so just go. take your finger really quick. Go to the mouse. No, you've got to do that quickly. There we go. And then hit done. And then hit done. <clears throat> yeah, but then hit you're going to have our signature. And no, I won't have the signature. And the charges to our bill. <laughs> so, interesting thing. These computers, when we reboot them at the end of this class, they remove the signature. Your computer at home will not. That's your personal computer. So once we get the signature in, what I want you to do is I want you to click create, sig click it again. You need to hit done or else it's not going to keep it. You got to hit done there or else it's not going to keep it. Then we're going to click create signature again, and we're going to do the date, which is on the back. So we hit create signature. And then we do the date. I'm going to come around and help anybody in a second. 
Yeah, you can do it on the back. Yep, just hit it one more time. Yep. Yeah. Now, if you're having trouble, I'm going to tell you that it's a little small, but definitely you see, you see, it's a little small. You can't make it. It doesn't work. Look at that. 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 Uh, only okay, hit create signature. And then you make another one. Um, so he said it only got part of the date. It's a lot harder to, number one, if the date's small. Number two, if it's this way, you don't have as much of a border. You want to make sure you do it the long way. So one of the cool things you can do is, technically, if you want to give it another try, just fold it this way and then write the date in that way. Okay, now, can I redo the date? Yeah, you can redo it. Okay. So you can redo as many things as you want. No. Yep, you gotta hit create signature. Close, close, close. Space close, 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 close. Space Very close. There we go. And then hit done. Hit done. Here, don't, don't worry about anything else. Uh, uh, then you hit done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes in. Uh, now, how do you get back? To say I want to put the whole thing. Just hit create signature again. What do you do? Yeah. 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 It's going to disappear. On your own computer, though, they will stay. Yeah, yeah. So they'll stay on your own computer inside of the preview application. And then how we will uh, use them is if you click on that signature thing and then just click on one of the signatures and it'll fly down in the document. That's right, yeah, of course. Now the cool thing is you have a little anchor that you can pull and make it bigger or smaller. If your document has a line on it to sign, it will automatically snap to the line which is pretty cool. So it'll snap straight to the line. And once we do that, yep, just hit the, no, let me get you. Just click on the signature there. So it'll automatically snap to the line and then you can move the date as well. It's part of, it's because it's of the way you took the, the picture. It's because it caught a bit of light from the side. If you want to try and fill up, why I have you used the white sheet of paper, is you want to try and fill up the entire view of the camera with that sheet of paper. So, like if I were to go, to give you an idea, I'll fill up the entire view of this camera with that sheet of paper. You're not going to see the camera now, but you have to fill up the whole view of the camera in order to get it to work. Now, I have the date. Yeah. And you have the signature. That's okay. It's good enough. It's a legal contract. Um, and then, if you wanted to email that back to someone, there we go. Now we have the date. So just, just, want to just change this, this now, want to get rid of this. Yeah, just click it and then delete it. So, I have my, my signature. Uh-huh. Now, how do I get the date? Just click back down on the, the JN. They're two separate oh, files. The little oh, signature guy. Right. Oh. And then just choose the date. So, so where do you delete? Just hit the delete key. Oh, the delete key. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we can go in, and that's how we would go ahead and add a signature to a document. Now, once we've done that, we can print that file, we can save that file, we can send that file, we can choose however we want to do something with that file. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that's pretty cool because it's actually built into every single Mac. So any Mac you, you would get would have that built in. Now, here's an interesting, here's an interesting trivia. Who created what you just saw? I think this is interesting to know. Who's, whose name is on the copyright for what you just saw? It's a one D. Copperfield. You've heard of David Copperfield. Yes. If you've ever seen a trick where a magician, if you'll see, they take a card, like a card, and they will burn the card. And you will see, they'll have someone sign a card. They'll burn the card. And then the card will come back signed. So they burn the card. The card comes back and it's fully signed. How that works is very interesting. What they do is they zoom a camera up to it, they isolate the signature, exactly like we just did right there. They isolate the signature, they print it on a new card, and they slip the new card to the magician. That's how you do a trick like that. That's how, this is where this comes from. Is someone from Apple saw that trick and went to David Copperfield and said, we want to purchase that to, to use in our signature signing app. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, I'm going to give you the exact Googleable term you can search to do this now that we've done it. 
It's called How to Sign a Document with Preview. So if you want to write that down, How to Sign a Document with Preview. All right. So that's all you need to do is Google how to sign a document with preview, and then you'll get walked through these steps. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, the next thing we're going to talk about on the Mac is movies, video editing. Have any of you ever watched other people's vacation videos before? Yeah. What's the best part of other people's vacation videos? They look great. What's the best part of them? The music. The end. Yeah. Not your vacation videos, other people's vacation videos. The best part of other people's videos is the end. Trust me, you don't want to sit through someone's hour and 45 minute video if you've ever done it before. I've done it multiple times before. So I want to show you how to make things in iMovie that are not terrible, if that makes sense. I'm going to show you how to make some videos in iMovie. What? Uh, so here's the cool thing, you've got a Mac, just leave it running in the background, it's fine, it's not going to break. Yeah. Uh, I want to get back to this yeah, for, for a second. Yeah. Now, can you do that on your iPad? Does so this is designed. Thing? This is designed. There are so there are multiple applications on the iPhone and the iPad that will allow you to do it. Today in the one o'clock class, we're, I'm not going to show you an app that does it today. But uh, today in the one o'clock class, we're talking about applications. The difference between this class and the others is this is things that are built in to the Mac. Well, okay. So laptops. laptops, desktops, anything like that. Now. Up until the last minute, in iOS 10, this application was built in on the iPhone and iPad. They pulled it at the last minute for some reason. It is possible that you will see it in iOS 11 next year on the iPhone or iPad. So that make the, that's the logical sense I can give you there. OK, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do some video editing. Now, we're not going to do some heavy video editing, but you'll see that you've got a little purple star on the bottom of your screen. I want you to go ahead and click that purple star. And it's going to open a program called iMovie. It's going to take a couple seconds to open. So we keep it shut down. Okay. So we should be able to click on that little purple star. And we'll get up iMovie. It's going to take a couple seconds. Just click on it. There we go. We're good. So what we're going to do now is we are going to make a movie trailer. We're going to make a movie trailer for a movie. Now, this is a fully automatic way to do something inside of iMovie. So this is not semi-automatic or manual. It's fully automatic. So we're going to add video clips. It's going to add titles. It's going to add music. It's going to add transitions. It's going to add names. It's going to do all of these things directly for us. So what I want you to do is I want you to go. Do you see where there's a little plus button? There should be a little plus button yeah. in the upper left hand corner. Yeah. I'm going to click back. You see that little plus button? Yeah. We're going to click that little plus button and we're going to say trailer. trailer. Plus button. Where is it? Upper left hand corner. Oh. Ah, click back one. If you clicked in somewhere, click the little plus button and then say trailer. <laughs> now, I want you to scroll to the top of the trailers. We're going to scroll to the top. So you have a scroll bar on the right. Just scroll to the top of it. Hit trailer. Scroll to the top of the trailer. And you will see something that says Blockbuster. I need you to scroll to the top. Blockbuster. It's in the second row. We got it. Scroll up a bit more. Blockbuster. So that's the trailer we're going to go with. So I want you to just scroll up to the top. I want you to click on Blockbuster and hit Create in the bottom right-hand corner. Create. In the bottom right-hand corner, hit Create. And what we're going to call this movie is we're going to call it Whitewater. Hit Create. One word, W-H-I-T-E-W-A-T-E-R. Whitewater. Yep, just delete what's there and type in one word, white water, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK. I got lost. Uh, you're OK. You can leave it there. Just change that word that says road trip. Click on it and change it to white water. 
So what we're doing is we're actually making a trailer. Yes. You hear okay? Good. Good. I get it. I got it. I got it. How do you get rid of What? Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll go with one word, though. Okay. So we've got our movie trailer. Now what this is, this is a basic template for a movie. So we're going to make a basic template for a movie. Now you'll see the name of our movie is Whitewater. Whitewater. It's named the name of the project. The release date is summer 2017. Mm -hmm. I want to change that back because summer 2017 hasn't happened yet. So we're going to go summer 2016. So just click and get rid of the seven and add in a six. And then, do you see where it says cast? Right. And it says mom, dad, Vanessa, Karen. Uh -huh. So I want you to get rid of mom and change it to Richard, R-I-C-H-A-R-D. And the last time I checked, Richard was not a female. He's a male. Wow. Okay. Two, two nights a year he's a female, but that's another story for another day. Halloween. And one other night, okay. cross dress, but that's another story. For another day. And then the next one, we need another male's name. Give me a recommendation, doesn't matter. Right. Tom. Right. Tom. Done. So, cast member, the second cast member, which says dad, is going to be Tom. So, what we have is we have an outline for a movie. So, we got an outline for a movie, and what we need to do with that movie is we need to create. We're going to create something with that movie. So this is our outline for the movie. And you'll see the name of our studio is uh, High Def Films. If you scroll down a bit more, you'll see that. The name of our studio is High Def Films. It's actually gone ahead. Yeah. Keep scrolling. Yeah, High Def Films. That's OK. We can leave all of that. But I'm saying you can technically change anything there. Do you see where it says Storyboard? Right here in the middle. I want you to click where it says Storyboard. And what we have is we are going to have an empty guideline for our movie. What does that mean? I want to show it to you so you can see what we're playing with right here. Watch my screen real quick. I think I'll be able to show this view. Uh, play full screen. Uh, let's see. So what you'll see though is this is going to be empty. But it has audio. It has transitions. It has all of this. So all we need to do is we need to add in video clips to this, and it's going to automatically edit our film together and do everything for us automatically. Now, there should be video clips up here. Here's the problem. Do any of you see video clips up there? No. No. Now, it's because if you look in the left-hand side, you'll see a bunch of different choices for video clips. Do you see those different choices? You'll see... Uh, uh, weekend in San Francisco, gymnastics, icebreakers, wind power. Which one do you think we're going to click on to do whitewater? Whitewater rafting. Right, water rafting trip. So go ahead and click on whitewater rafting trip. Whitewater rafting trip. And that's going to give us all of our videos for our whitewater rafting trip. Now, the cool thing is, all we have to do is click on the video. I'm going to tell you which ones to do. We're just going to click on the video. That's going to automatically add to our story. And we're going to be able to build out an entire movie inside of our videos. Now, if you look at the sec, you see we have these different clips up here. I want you to look at clip number two. Not number one, number two. And go ahead and click on clip number two. And it's going to fly down. Boom. Can we see that? Yeah. Now we're going to go to clip number three. Click on clip number three, the one right after oh. clip number two. <laughs> and it'll fly down. And then you're going to click on clip number four. So two, three, and four in that order. Uh, did you click on one? No. You need to click. Okay, you scroll down a bit. That one is two, three, and four. Now why I had you click on those is those need to be longer clips, and I don't have a whole lot of longer clips inside of this video inside of these videos. So these are all these are all different clips right here. So we need to make sure that we have our clips. Now you notice 
click two, three, and four, if we clicked on them, they now have a little orange line underneath them. Do you see that? Yeah. See that little orange line? Yeah. That means those clips have already been used. So you don't go ahead and use them again. That's the idea. So it's showing you, hey, those clips are already used. I don't want you to use those clips again. So that's why I've gone ahead and I put a little orange line underneath it. Makes pretty good sense? Yeah. Now the next thing it's going to ask us for is, I think, an action shot. So if you look, you just look up in the video, you look for something that looks like an action shot, doesn't matter, and just click on it. We can all use something a little bit different. So just click up in these videos, click on something that you think is an action shot, and it flies down to the bottom. So action <coughs> shot. And then you can go a group oh, shot, oh, 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 oh. an action shot, a medium <laughs> shot is just any shot, and I want you to go and stop where it says action slow motion. We're not going to use action slow motion. Okay, I'll get you in a few seconds. You're going to stop at action slow motion. I'll get you, I'll get you, give me a second. So no, just go ahead and click around. So I click on this, yeah? So you're going to... Click there, and then you just click, uh, you see where it says action, we just click there, and you see the clip comes down. We can say medium, click there, the clip comes down, group, I'm just clicking, and it's coming down. You can do anything you want there. Action, action, group, and it's filled up. Stop, so you have to fill up all five of those until we get to action slow motion. I want you to stop there. So you still got a couple, you got the four more, just any clips. It doesn't matter what it is. We're just, today is about experiencing what you do. We're not going to make content today. So you could have just used three or four, or you didn't use, did you use them all, is that correct? Right, we only used three or four. Oh, no, no, we need to fill out the whole storyboard. Okay. But we're just choosing from these clips yeah. up here. So we're not going to use all, we're not going to use all these clips on the top. This is all the video we have available to us, but we're not going to use all that video at the top. Okay. So we should uh, just click around. It doesn't matter, any clips. Action. Yes, just, clip is not just choose another one if it's not long enough. We're good. We're in action slow motion. Just click uh, click two more clips. It doesn't matter which ones uh, they are. Uh, Rich? Yep. Say you wanted to change the picture. You can key. click on it and you can hit the delete key on your keyboard and then that'll take it. It'll delete that'll it. That'll delete it and then you put it back in. Yeah. Did I let you use one with an orange line twice? Yes. It tries to avoid you using one with an orange line twice but it's not gonna prevent you from using one with an orange line twice. So, we'll see where it says action slow motion. Anything you were to put in slow there motion. will be automatically slowed down. So if you can find, we're not all gonna find it, there's a clip of a guy jumping into the water off of a cliff. It's right here, it's right between the, uh, the friends all hugging together and the friend's sitting doing the marshmallows. It doesn't matter if you've already used the clip, but you can click on that clip. Right here. Right there, yeah. It's okay. I'll get you in a few seconds. And then we go action slow motion. And that will... It's okay. We can delete it. Hit delete. You see this button, this one right here? Or this one? It's uh, this one that I want to use. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter who Richard is, who Vanessa is, who Karen is, that's okay. I'm looking for where. Okay, here we go. Oh, and this the one for the Yep. And then you can the one for the It doesn't matter which one you use. And then when you see Richard, Tom, Vanessa, Karen, just choose whatever you want there, it doesn't matter. Richard, Tom, Vanessa, Karen. Just scroll the little ball. Uh, you, there's not much up and down there to give up, honestly. There's not much up and down there. So we got Rich. So what's nice is there's uh, there's two different guys and two different girls, so it should be relatively easy to find a Richard, Tom, Vanessa, and Karen. And it doesn't matter right now. It's okay. I just want you to understand what we're doing. We're just filling out a video clip, and you can just finish it up all the way to the end. That's okay. It does not matter. I'm not grading you on your content or anything today. 
So it doesn't matter which, in which way you go about doing this, it's fine. So we got Richard, Tom, Vanessa, Karen. It's okay, just click through some clips and you'll be okay. You're actually almost done. Just go ahead and click on a Richard, Tom, it doesn't matter who they are, Vanessa, Karen, and then just click four more clips. No, one's a blonde and one's a, one's a brunette. So there's two girls. If they look alike, you might be looking at the blonde twice or the brunette twice. So group, action, group. Action. Unless it tells you elsewise, no, it doesn't matter. So the first three clips had to be a specific length, which was pretty long. They had to be at a specific length or else it would have gotten angry at you. That's why I chose those three clips as I chose those three clips. Cool? We've got the basic concept there. So that's how you would make a trailer. Now I'm going to show you a final trailer. I'm going to wait for everybody to click on, we've got one more. Just click three things, any three things, it doesn't matter. Just click any, any three things there. So action, group, action, you're done. You just need to fill out the whole trailer. It's weird because you're looking at people you don't know. I agree, it's weird because you're looking at people you don't know, but it's okay at the same time. Now, I had a question before the class started, and I want to address that question because I think it's an interesting question. He said, is there a way that you can make a video small enough to send in an email? Now, most email providers will only allow attachments up to 10 megabytes. Gmail right now just started allowing attachments up to 50 megabytes, but it goes through Google Drive. It's a bit of a pain to do that. So the correct answer is you should never be sending a video through email. So I want to show you how to share that video. Now, I had another question, who, you were asking this before the class, I think this is interesting, that said, well, when is the Mac and the iPhone and the iPad going to merge? And the answer is they already have started merging. Um, what you'll <laughs> see is, you know how you would share something on your iPhone or iPad? You've got that little box with the arrow going out of it. In the newer version of iMovie, look in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see there's a little box with an arrow going out of it. That came over from the iPhone and iPad and went to the Mac. So you're seeing more and more things, like if you were to look at, this is my, my new 15-inch MacBook Pro, and it actually has a touch screen right here called the touch bar. And when I want to get in, I don't have to type in a password, I go ahead and I put my finger on the fingerprint scanner. So you're starting to see kind of how that's, so this is actually running, this is running the same software on it as the Apple Watch runs on it which runs on a version of iOS. So iOS has already come to Mac, but I don't want it to fully come to Mac because then you won't be able to put on programs that Apple doesn't approve and different things like that. That's my logic there. But we see that share button. Go ahead and click on that share button. And there are eight different ways to share there. Let's count them. Do we all see eight? You don't see nine, you only see eight. There's nine there, but there's one we should just be ignoring. Right nope, there's one we should ignore. Just hit that little share button right there, the upper right corner. Which one doesn't belong based on the conversation we had about three seconds ago? In the upper right hand corner. Email does not belong. Here's the thing to understand if you hit email, iMovie will compress your video, make it very small. Even this 55 second video cannot be sent in good quality in under 10 megabytes to give you an idea there. So it can't be set in good quality in under 10 megabytes, because to give you an idea, a full HD movie is one <clears throat> megapixel. So it's one megapixel per every frame. It's 1080p, which is essentially one <clears throat> megapixel. In a video, you have 30 frames per second. So to send a movie in full HD that's one minute long is about 150 megabytes, just <laughs> to, give you, to give you an idea there. So what we want to do is, this is going to sound strange, go ahead and hit on YouTube. Yeah, this is how I share movies all the time. And I want to show you this because I don't want you to be afraid of this. So a lot of people go, well, I don't want to share my movies on YouTube because I don't want people seeing them and all that. YouTube is meant for people to see. Like we post like this video after this class later tonight is going to go up on YouTube, uh, on our little YouTube channel, which I'll tell you about a bit later in the cruise. But 
YouTube, you can make things private as well. But private's not the right answer. Do you see where it says privacy right here? Yes. <clears throat> click, on, click on where it says private. And when you put something in YouTube, you actually have three different options. You have public, private, or unlisted. What you want to do is you want to do it unlisted. What that means is when it finishes uploading to YouTube, it's going to give you a link. Only if you send that link to someone can they view the video. It is going to send that video to YouTube in the highest possible quality. And depending how a person accesses it, it's going to send them different qualities of video. You never want to lower the quality on your video. That's the idea. So YouTube can take 8K videos now. So it can take really, really heavy videos, videos that are heavier than I even have. But you want to upload it. Upload it as unlisted. And then it'll give you a link when it finishes, and you can share that link with someone. But just to give you an idea, you see where it says the size? This is a 55-second movie, and it's like 60 megs. So could you imagine emailing that? No. It's not going to email. Yeah. It's from 68 megs is what I have. I don't know what you guys have. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 68 megs. That is gigantic. That is a huge video file. We cannot go emailing that. So what you would do is you would upload it to YouTube, and you would use it as unlisted. And then you can just take that link and copy and paste it into an email, and then they can see what they're doing. If you need to, now, that's just to view the file. If you need to share the file, the answer is to use something like Google Drive or Dropbox, and then you just move the file in that way. But we're going to hit cancel. Just go ahead and hit cancel right there. <clears throat> I want to show you the movie you've made. Now, the movie you've made is not going to be perfect. This is just a first try. We're going to hit on that share menu one more time. And you're going to say theater. So hit cancel. Oh, okay. So you're going to say theater. And what it's going to do is it's going to share your movie out to the theater. Now what the theater is, is it's where all of your finished iMovie projects go across the iPhone and the iPad and everything. Now going back to your earlier question, because I like to go back to that question, this version of iMovie is almost exactly the same as iMovie on the iPhone and iPad. It's just built for a mouse instead of being built for a fingerprint. I personally like the older version of iMovie before they put on the, this way. That's a personal choice. Um, I use Final Cut Pro, which is the higher end of iMovie. Uh, which lets you do some really cool effects and really cool titles and stuff like that. But you can do almost anything you need to do inside of iMovie. And to give you an example, I'm going to play this movie real quick. And then I'll let you play yours. And then we've got one more thing to do. But this one should be the one that's filled out. So, this is what we're playing with. Now, if you notice, it actually is going to go from black and white to color. It's running a bit slow because I'm recording it. But what you'll see is on the beat, it's going to play. So when you see the name, you go. And then it go bum, 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 bum. And then it just closes it out. Now, it did that all fully automatically, and if you want to, you can go ahead and double click on your first thing that says white water. I'm not going to turn on the volume just yet, but understand all that volume would be there. We're going to turn on the volume for the last thing we do today, which is one of my absolute favorite things we're going to do. <laughs> but it would play that back. Now, let's talk about the last thing we're going to do today. You can watch your video while we talk about the last thing we're going to do today. It's the same video that we just saw up there. Last thing we're going to do today, yeah, question? Yeah, I have a question. Uh -huh. Years ago, when I used iMovie with the timeline uh -huh. and all that, I didn't want to make movies. I used it to do slides. You can still use it for slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can still use it for pictures. And you can do the Ken Burns effect where it moves in. All So all the stuff from the old iMovie is still there. It's just dumbed down a bit. If you really want to play with stuff, though, Final Cut's the way to go. Final Cut's an amazing piece of software. You can find. You can get, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get a free trial on Apple's site. It gives you a free 30-day trial of Final Cut, and I've been playing around with it. The last thing I want to show you. Yeah. Where are com coming from all the, the pictures? So where are all the pictures coming from? They're actually coming from the iPhone. 
They're, they've already been brought in from the iPhone. They've already been brought in from the iPhone. So all of those were taken on video on the iPhones. Um, all those videos you saw, they were actually promotional videos that were made by Apple many, many years ago to promote the camera quality on the iPhones and iPads. But the last thing I want to show you today is something you will never see anywhere else. Why you will never see it anywhere else is because it's incredibly illegal. If it's shown in other places. I'm going to... Remove that before I go ahead and talk about this. Now, remember, this is like uh, this is like if someone asks if you're a cop, you have to be honest and you have to say yes. Does anybody work for the music or movie industry in this room? Nope. Okay. We're good? Because I had someone over there about a year and a half ago that was a lawyer for the movie and music industry, and he wasn't following along with what I told, and I go, why aren't you following? He goes, well, because I try and defend this. Nothing we're doing right now is technically illegal in any way, shape, or form and everything comes on your machine already. But I'm gonna show you something that they will never show you in the United States or Canada or anywhere like that due to some very specific laws. I'm gonna explain the law and then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna show. Have any of you ever bought a song from iTunes before? Yes. Have you ever tried to you buy it on your iPhone or your iPad, you buy a song? No. Yeah, well, you have music on your computer, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you buy a song from iTunes, when you buy that song from iTunes, your purchase agreement allows you to listen to that song on the speaker of your phone, on headphones, or on a Bluetooth speaker. You actually, with that license, it's going to sound weird, with that license, you can't go DJ a party, you can't go publicly play that, that needs to be a separately purchased license. But here's the really dumb thing. You're allowed to play it over speaker, you're allowed to play it over headphones, you're allowed to play it over a Bluetooth speaker, but if you want to use it as your ringtone, you have to pay a separate contractual agreement to use that song as your ringtone because when it's used as a ringtone, it is legally considered a public performance. <laughs> yes, that is true story. So, in the Apple stores, I was never allowed to teach what I'm about to teach you. But what I'm going to show you how to do is any song you happen to have on your computer, you can make a ringtone for your iPhone or your iPad. Not only a ringtone, but also an alarm tone or anything like that for your iPhone or iPad with built-in software on the Mac. This is something you have on every Mac. Now you must, before I open the software, because there is a similar name software on the iPhone or iPad, you must do this on a Mac. You can't do it on your iPhone or iPad and then get it to your iPhone or iPad. You have to do it on a Mac. So the name of the software we're gonna use now, the cool thing is, this is, that all that legality stuff I told you, is valid in the United States. Good news is, uh, are we in the United States? No. Okay, so uh, that's why I do this on a sea day, if that makes sense. Um, it's also valid in the United Kingdom, so if we're in Barbados tomorrow and you see me going off the gangway in handcuffs, one of you tattled. No, I'm just kidding. It's nothing that anybody's ever going to prosecute you about, but Apple can never teach this publicly in their stores because of their agreements they have with the providers. So, I want you to go ahead and open GarageBand. You should see a little guitar on the bottom of your screen. This is the last thing we're going to do today. Garage band. Garage band. A little guitar on the bottom of your screen. It's going to take a couple seconds to open. Don't worry about it. And I'm going to close it because... Okay, everything I've shown you today is preloaded on every Mac. Now, your iMovie and GarageBand may not show up on the bottom bar. But if you go into your applications folder, it's inside of your applications folder. Every program I showed you is preloaded. They may not be right there on the bottom, but everything is preloaded. That was the point of today's class. So when you have GarageBand, you'll see something that says ringtone. You see that right up there? We're going to double click where it says ringtone. I don't want to download anything. And it's going to give us an empty ringtone. Now, what I'm showing you here is not designed, it's not designed for you to do what I'm about to show you. What I'm about to show you is kind of a sideways way to do this. This is designed to compose your own ringtone. You can put in your own beats, you can make your own music, you can make your own ringtone. But what's very interesting, this is good, that's exactly where you need to be. What's interesting is all of these Apple programs are connected together. So if I wanted to make a soundtrack for a movie, I could make the soundtrack for the movie in GarageBand, put in sound effects and everything like that. If I wanted to edit a song, I can do that as well. So in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a little film strip, camera, and a music <laughs> note. Do you see that? Click yeah. on that. Click on which one? Uh, just the film. They're all in one button. This upper right-hand button you can press. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 
It's called a media browser. Yep. Click on the one all the way to the right. Yep. And what this is going to do is this is going to give you access to all of your songs that are inside of iTunes. I don't mind how you got those songs, but it's going to give you access to all the songs that are inside of iTunes. Unfortunately, my computers are filled with this thing called garbage music. Being anything that's made after the early 1990s is pretty much garbage music. Uh, I have, I, I like oldies music. I don't like this stuff that's out nowadays. But there's one song that's okay from the last few years that's in here. So we're going to make a ringtone with that song. It's from uh, Bruno Mars. It's called Uptown Funk. So you should see in the bottom right hand corner, all the way in the bottom right, you'll see a little search box. I want you to go ahead and type the word uptown, U-P-T-O-W-N, one word. Uptown funk. U-P-T-O, okay. And what we're gonna get is we're gonna get Uptown Funk featuring Bruno Mars. We're just searching through our music collection. And we're going to click down on it, and we're going to drag it to the middle where it says drag Apple Loops here. So we click down, and we drag it to where it says drag Apple Loops here. Click it, click down, and then drag it here. Just move your mouse to the left. Perfect. Ah, close. Where, where, where? Drag it into the middle. Uh, which drag one? It. Anywhere. Doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 We're going to drag it into the middle. And now what we need to do is, for some of us, it's at the beginning of our song. Don't right click. Uh, it's not, it's just uptown. U, P, T, O. So we just drag it. Some of us at the beginning of our song, some of us it's in the middle of the song, so we're going to click on it, we're going to move it to point number one. So you click on it and move it to point. So click on it and drag it to the left so it starts with number one. Click on the actual song, drag it to the left. Oh, okay. So it starts with point number one. Yeah. And now we have it at the beginning of our song. Now here's the question. <laughs> what is the Let's name go. of our song? No. Try again. So when you save a document, it's always saved right on the top middle. So what's the name of our song? Uptown Funk. Uptown. Uptown. Nope. What's the name of our song? Oh, 120. Untitled Tracks. Oh. Because GarageBand doesn't care what you put in a song. It only cares what you ultimately name it. Does that make sense? So the idea of GarageBand is it's for mixing stuff. Also, I point this out with GarageBand, it is the only program on the Mac that you still have to hit save in. Because people like to have multiple versions of songs. So it's the only program you still have to go ahead and hit save in. So that's the concept there. So we've got Uptown Funk. Now we need to, we need to call it Uptown Funk. So we're going to go up, we're going to hit file, and we're going to hit save. File, save. We're going to call it Uptown Funk. Save as? Save, eh, save, save as, it doesn't matter. We're going to call it Uptown Funk, and then what you'll see is up on the top, it's now going to, once we hit save, it's going to be called Uptown Funk. Just call it Uptown Funk. U-P-T-O-W, just call it Uptown, you'll be okay. U-P-T-O-W-N. Uptown Funk. And we're good. Now, here's the thing. It's still inside of GarageBand. So, the loaded question is, how do we make it a ringtone? Before we do that, what I want you to do is I want you to go to your computer and you're going to turn the volume up on your computer. So grab out the keyboard, turn the volume up all the way. This is the one time we get to make a little bit of noise. Yeah, there we go. Turn the volume up. Right here. Yeah, pump up the volume. It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, we can make it as loud as we want. The doors are closed. There's a very technical reason I need this to be very loud. I'll explain in a minute. But then the question is, how do we get it to be a ringtone? Now, what program synchronizes stuff with your iPhone or iPad? No, you just plug it in your phone. You no, you don't. Oh, that's no. 
but we need to get it out of GarageBand. That's the trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I understand you just plug in your phone, but we need to get it out of GarageBand. So you've done this before, right? Yeah, I've uh, downloaded uh, something off the internet. So you've used a ringtone maker and you've done right, it. Yeah. But what's cool is if you have a Mac, you can do this fully automatically. I know the way you're talking about, you do use the ringtone maker, and then you drag it into, what's the name of the program? iTunes, right? You should be able to drag it into iTunes. Right. So you'll see a button that says share up on the top. And which button do you think we're going to press inside of share? Ringtone. Yeah, we gotta call it Uptown Funk. Now share. What did you say? Say it louder. Ringtone. Criminal! <laughs> you see, the great thing is, I will never say it, but you can assume which button to press, right? Share. You can let them know. Which one do we hit? I can't say it. It's called, it's called self-preservation. Go ahead and click it. What we just said to click. And we should get a lot of noise in a couple of seconds. I'm going to have a drink because I'm not going to be able to talk over this. It's going to happen. Oh, let me do it for myself, too. And then the next time, I'm not going to talk over this, it's going to finish in 30 seconds. The next time you plug in your device, your iPhone or your iPad, it's going to sync over that ringtone. It's going to finish in about 24 seconds. We're just going to live through it. There we go. So, the reason I needed that to play loud, unfortunately we can't play that. Um, the reason I needed that to play loud is because that's a copyrighted song, but if we all play it at the same time, nobody's going to identify it as a copyrighted song. So that was the goal of that loud mess of music. Yeah? I download all my music from my iPhone. Uh-huh. Uh, through YouTube. Okay. okay. Questionable legality, but we'll, we'll continue on that. It's okay. No, I have software that converts... That's still not illegal, it's but let's, con let's continue. Um, okay. you can, That's not legal? No. No? Uh, you are to, you're not allowed to download music and, and audio and video from YouTube. Am I saying that I'm a saint and I don't do it? No, but I'm just telling you the actual legal definition of how it works. Yeah. Honestly, sometimes I'll need a song, and I will do exactly what you do. But I'm just letting you know the legal yeah, definition. Okay. It is not technically legal to do what you're doing. <laughs> nobody's going to catch you. Nobody's going to put you in jail. Yeah. Nobody's going to put me in jail for what I just showed you. But, but certain doing. songs you can't, I, I guess. Because Correct, because they've been locked down. Oh, okay. Well, no. All songs have a copyright on it. Certain songs you can't because they're maliciously preventing you from doing that, as weird as that sounds. Musicians don't make money. This is I'm gonna give you. Musicians don't make money on albums anymore. The music companies, Sony and them, make money on albums. The musicians make money on their concerts. So as weird as it sounds, they want you to share that stuff. So you'll go to the concert because they make hundred percent of their ticket revenue from their concert. They only make ten percent of what they get on their albums. Yeah. Years ago, my son, who was a developer for Apple, uh -huh. uh, had a tape collection that was enormous. Yeah. I said, I need to borrow some tape, and he said, absolutely not. So this was my son. Yep. So I went to the library. Yep, and, and then you copied those tapes. Got, and, Again, know, there's certain things that are, that are illegal, but no one's ever going to come after you for. You know, they, they talk about people stealing music and stealing movies and doing all that kind of thing. You're never going to get in trouble for downloading something, but you get in trouble for uploading it a lot of the time. You yeah, know, that's, if you're using it personally and you're not selling it. Doesn't matter. If, if you're making more than one copy of something, you can make one backup copy of anything, if you're making more than one copy, it's, it's illegal. Don't worry, I'm talking from bad experience. But, uh, so, that is Mac to the Future. That is Mac to the Future in a nutshell. Later today at 1 o'clock in Celebrity Central, we're going to be talking about the uh, apps. Come on, get Appy, all the apps for the iPhone and iPad. And then we have our VIP, so this is not the normal one, this is if you sign up for the whole set, our VIP Google Photos, but our normal Google Photos will be on St. Kitts, our normal one, which is going to be in Celebrity Central on St. Kitts Day. And then we also have something uh, 
Plus, it's St. Lucia night. We have something kind of new and interesting that we're doing. It's called the Smartphone Photo Challenge. It's a game show that's going to be downstairs in the uh, celebrity, not in the area outside of Celebrity Central, the entertainment court, where I'm going to pick a random object, random thing like a dog, and you have to go through your phone, and the first person to find a picture of a dog wins a prize. In there, it's a really cool. I came up with this concept a little bit ago. We tried it once like a year ago, and we're gonna try it again now. It's really cool, and the idea is, I show you how much more efficiently it works with Google Photos, but it's a challenge between the port and the starboard side, and you can choose, so you, I don't, I, between me and you, I think I just gave you one of the, one of the answers, because dog is one of the answers, so if, you, if, you're, if you're ready with a dog, you've got it, but I'm not gonna tell you any more of them, but, uh, and I'm gonna have to give everyone else that same, uh, that same cheat, but that's going to be in a couple days. So keep a lookout in the daily program. We've got a lot of stuff coming up for the rest of the cruise. But that's it for Mac to the Future. Bye!